What's going on? Hope you are ready to learn some English. I'm in my actual classroom right now, and I just recorded a video for my native English students, and I thought I would share it with you. I will be speaking a lot more quickly than I am now, and the English vocabulary is going to be pretty advanced, but there is a link below where you can get all the words and all the definitions, and most of these words have something to do with the brain. So a lot of them are science related. So hopefully this helps you. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more of these lessons because I deliver them to my native English students about twice a month. So I can upload more of these to this channel if you would like. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy. Hope you learn lots. All right, Monday. You ready for this one? Monday. All right. <clears throat> It's early, uh, so hopefully my voice is okay. I'm sure it'll be fine, but these are actually the first words I've spoken out loud this morning. Hopefully the time change hasn't messed you up too much. We're going to talk about the 14 words uh, from the brain unit that we are going to encounter uh, in the first article. Like it's, it's pretty tough. Let's bring them up. I do have some sentences for you along the way because I think they are pretty tough. So let's talk about the first one assimilate you can see and it means to fully absorb or to absorb fully to adopt as one's own to adapt fully now in that picture you can see where there are all these different nationalities people from other countries and then in the the boiling pot down there it says american we have actually talked about assimilate before and it was in a bad way because the American government wanted indigenous people to assimilate to like American culture, more of a European culture. Many more of them were forced. Later on, we have a word called involuntary. Many of them were forced to cut their hair and adopt a more Western style of dress. So they assimilated, forced, assimilated into American culture. Okay, I do have a sentence for you. I think this is kind of tough because it means to like incorporate or to combine and then you can't tell what it was before. So if indigenous people are trying to hold on to their culture, assimilating is a bad, a bad thing because you're supposed to lose everything. Here's where it's good. I think any kind of powdered drinks. And when I was a kid, I think I have to say that in every lesson, right? When I was a kid, um, we had Kool-Aid and it was all powdered. Now, most of it's liquid. But back in my day, there were powdered, like protein. If anybody takes protein shakes, those are still powdered. So what you want to do is you want to um, assimilate the sugar, the powder into the water. So you can't tell that there was any kind of powder there before. So here's the sentence I have. When I make a powdered drink like Kool-Aid, I want the powder to assimilate into the water. So you can't see it anymore. I think a pretty tough one because we also have a couple other ones that are like really close, like integrate. We'll talk about, we'll talk about. But the next one, let me make this bigger, get rid of that, is tendency. Tendency. So the likelihood of behaving in a certain way. So tendency, maybe you have a tendency to sleep late on the weekends. Maybe you have a tendency to wait until the last minute to do an assignment. So you're likely to do it. More often than not, you're going to do this a certain way. Hopefully that makes sense. Tendency. I have a tendency to eat too much candy. We got this guy, it's a Billy. We'll talk about Billy and his diet around the holidays. Well, I have a tendency to eat more candy around Halloween. We had a bunch of leftover candy last week and I ate way too many M&Ms, Twix bars, the mini ones, but they add up. So not ideal. How about this next one? Integrate. Sometimes I have a trouble saying that. Integrate, to bring together and to make whole. So this is where, like if somebody is integrating into society, they're becoming part of it, but it's not like assimilating and they're losing part of themselves. How about this? 
this week, I'm going to try and integrate more exercise into my weekly routine. So you just kind of like bring it in. Um, let's say we have a new student. I don't think we do. Hope we don't. New student on the team anytime soon. But hopefully there will be a, a, an attempt to integrate them into like our team, our culture. Hopefully they're not completely ostracized. That's a big word. I like that word. Not one of our words, not one of our 14, but ostracized means like they're not included in anything. It's the opposite of being integrated, but that's a bonus word. We got enough hard words, but if you remember uh, ostracize, it's a good thing. Hopefully you don't feel ostracized on this team. It just means nobody wants anything to do with you. All right, the next one. What is it? Let me bring it up here. Oh, observation. Observation. So this is a noun. You might hear the verb observe. This is probably one of the easier ones, I think. But it's the act of noticing, describing events or processes in a careful, orderly way. Yeah, and this, you might do this during a lab in science class. Have an observation. You watch something happen. Um, teachers, we get observed all the time. You'll see maybe in one of your classes, Mr. Wilson, our principal, has come in to observe me. He is giving me an observation, which means telling me how I can be a better teacher. Most of the time he says, you know what? You are amazing. You are a perfect teacher. No, just kidding. Nobody's a perfect teacher, but an observation. So I don't know. Sometimes students get observed. You know, if there's a therapist or something like that and they want to see how that person behaves in class, they will just come and observe. They will conduct an observation. Observation, noun, observe, verb, something you do. Next one, you so if there is an observation after, hopefully you will provide documentation. Big words, it's just another noun. It can be a verb to document something. But documentation, it's like just, um, what's the definition here? Let me make it bigger. I think it's a pretty good definition. A description of the behavior of a command function library. Yeah. So documentation, let me use an example. So um, if you are going to drive a car, you should have documentation. So your driver's license would be, it's like documentation is like proof. So if a therapist is coming in to observe a student, they're probably taking down notes. They're probably documenting what they see. So documentation is the noun. It might be a piece of paper. It might be some kind of a digital file that can be pulled up. Documentation. It's just like it's proof that something happened. Okay. The documentation that you pass your driver's license, your driver's test is your driver's license. Documentation. Oh, the next one. Involuntarily. It's a good word. Can't stop doing it. Involuntarily. And you can see there's a picture of somebody yawning. So oftentimes when somebody yawns, excuse me, when somebody yawns, there's an involuntary kind of reflex. A reflex is an involuntary movement to also yawn. Coughing, <clears throat> not the same. You might catch some kind of illness from somebody coughing, but it's not the same as a, a yawn. Oftentimes that's involuntary. This has not happened to me at the doctors in a while, but sometimes they'll take that little that little rubber hammer thing and then like hit you on the uh, knee in the right place and you can't help it. It's involuntary. You just, you have to move your leg. You can't stop it. Involuntary. I would like to think that me eating candy over the last week was an involuntary action, but I know I could have stopped. I just, I just ate too much. All right, the next one. Mm, neurologist, neurologist. Anytime you hear neuro, N-E-U-R-O, anytime you hear that, neuro, think brain. All right. So a neurologist is a person who studies the brain. That one's pretty straightforward. Neurologist. The next one, let me make it bigger. Probably should have my glasses on so I could see. All right. Synopsis. Synopsis. This is a total science one. And the definition is tiny gaps that fire to make the brain work. 
All right. So I'm not a scientist, but so I, I probably can't describe these as well as somebody else. But from what I understand, there are these little things in our brain and they have to fire to send messages. And it happens really quickly. Like if you have a pain at the bottom of your foot, maybe you stub your toe in the middle of the night on your way to, to the bathroom or to get a drink of water, like that pain almost is immediate and it gets sent up to your brain and your brain will fire these little synapses. I believe um, neurons are involved or whatever, but uh, just, just, I don't know, is there a picture there? Yeah. It's usually like a cone like shape and there are some gaps in your brain and the synapses are firing. So in like everyday English, you just might hear um, somebody waking up in the morning and they're a little groggy. I'm like, oh man, my, my synopses are definitely not firing on all cylinders yet. So they, they might have to wake up a little bit. Synops, just your brain sending information really quickly to other parts of the brain. Hopefully that helps your synopses. All right, what's next? Subconscious, subconscious. You're not fully aware of something. It's occurring below your level of thinking and awareness. So if you are conscious of something, you are aware of it. Like right now, I am conscious of the fact that I'm sitting in a classroom and trying to teach some, some new words to people, hopefully. But subconsciously, there could be some things in my brain that I'm not even thinking about. Anytime you see sub, think below. So you might have sub-zero temperatures. They're below. You might have a submarine. Submarine. Marine often means water. And I'm not sure why, you know, Veterans Day is coming up. Thank you to all the veterans. If any of your uh, family served in the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, any of the branches, please say thank you to them for me. Uh, but the Marines is a branch of the Navy uh, sorry, it's a branch of the uh, the army, but they don't, I mean, they might, they do whatever they have to, right? But uh, they might, the Navy's associated with water, but a submarine, like if you hear marine forecast, that's basically like on the coast, water, marine forecast. Uh, but a submarine goes below the water, sub zero, subconscious. So you might not even be conscious of what you're thinking. And I think I have a sentence right here. I think I have been worrying subconsciously about Friday's project all week. So maybe there's just something a little off and you can't, you don't know why, but maybe somewhere in the back of your brain, that's how I often like describe subconscious. Like you don't even realize you're doing it. Some people in class, maybe like subconsciously, like tapping on things. You don't even know you're doing it. It's just, you're doing it, but your brain isn't conscious of what is going on. It's below, I think that's the definition, like it's below your level of thinking. So you're not aware of it. You're not, you're not aware that you're thinking. Hopefully, and anytime you have a question, this is going long, but we got 14. I'm trying to go quickly. All right, the next one is, is dis oh, suspicion. Suspicion. This one might not be that bad. Like, you have a feeling, a bad feeling of mistrust. So you might have a suspicion that your boyfriend or girlfriend is cheating on you. Just a little feeling there of mistrust. And suspicious is the adjective. So you might be suspicious of your best friend. Are they starting rumors about you? Suspicious. So uh, one more time. It's a feeling of doubt or mistrust. Next one, I think is not too bad, right? It is despised. Despised. It's another way to say hated. I hope you don't despise English class. I hope. I hope. You might despise school. I could see that. But hopefully when you come to English class, you hopefully you just hate it or you just don't like it. But despise, really strong hatred. Really strong hatred. All right, the next one, oh, deteriorated. Hard to say. We only have three left. Deteriorated. Yeah, I've, I've trouble saying that. Deteriorate. 
deteriorated, deterioration, the weather conditions deteriorating, not easy to say, deteriorating. Um, so if like you're going home, this happened to me before, like you're going home and it's snowing just a little bit, but then as you get closer to home, it just gets more of like a whiteout condition, things like that. If the weather is deteriorating, it means it's like getting worse. Like you shouldn't be driving. Um, as we age, since we're talking about the brain, our memory, unfortunately, when you get, you know, older than me, hopefully in your 70s or 80s, your memory might start deteriorating. It's not as good as it once was. Unfortunate, but... That's one way we could use interior deteriorate. All right. Introspection and regression are the last two. We kind of talked about regression a little bit. These are big words. Anytime you see intro, think inside. Introspection, anytime you see spect, S-P-E-C-T, think um, to look at. So somebody's glasses might be called uh, spectacles. A spectator is watching something. Maybe you were a spectator this weekend when you were watching a game of some sort. So um, introspection, sentence right here for you. After some introspection, I realized I've been a jerk the whole week. So this means you're looking inside yourself and you're like critiquing yourself. You're thinking about your actions. It's always helpful to do. Talked with some students and they've said that they do this almost every day in some sort of way, whether it be meditating. But introspection's a, a good thing to do, I think. It's just look at yourself, try to look at yourself without an opinion. We might say objectively, like, how have I been acting? Have I been a good person? Have I been a bad person? But this means regression, make it a little bigger, going back to something that was worse in some way. So um, if people are trying to get better at something, you might have a regression where you get a little bit worse. And it could totally happen with a diet. We talked about that earlier. So, wow, 18 minutes. Hopefully this was helpful. And we went, I think we went pretty quickly.